The War Room. The War Room is essentially an immersive space for teams to collect all their content. It's essentially the home for the project. It, uh, it, it should feel like a place that the team can go to relax. It has to be a dedicated space. Um, in corporations, often they don't have that, that resource or that luxury to have a, a dedicated room to go to where they collect all their, all their information they're gathering from the field. It's not just the information they're gathering from the field, but it's also any contextual information that could help them in their, in their thinking going forward. So, just setting up your war room. What's required? Um, again, I just told you a lot about the materials that's, that's needed. But it's really important that when you, when you come back for, from a, a trip or a, you know, a field visit or observation, is to sit down right away and discuss it with your team. If you're alone, then discuss it with some people. If you're together, discuss it together. But it's, it's very key to start getting out, okay, what did you hear from that, from that interview? Oh, I heard this. And then capturing those on post-it notes is really important. It sounds very, very simple but it's very, very essential because what you start to do with those post-it notes, you start to sort and you cluster and you can sort of create, start to create buckets uh, through that. Photographs are also extremely important because it's a visual reminder um, and it's, you can trace your steps back three or four weeks later in the project, say, oh, remember what, what uh, Harold said about the situation. And here is just a simple Venn diagram. You take a couple of stakeholders and what are their needs uh, or goals put them together. In the case of patients, you have these. In the, patient, the, the, the case of the uh, healthcare professionals, you have these needs. What happens when you overlap them? Where's the area there that you could satisfy both? Both. So a simple Venn, Venn diagram can, can do a lot for you here. Um, and that's an example of uh, just uh, some of the prototypes we did for DePaul. If we want to talk more about this, maybe I can uh, talk to the individual groups or if you're more interested in uh, learning more about that. If the students can take back what they're learning back into their home organization, to their band and to their mentors, they can tell a very simple story and show the evidence. Um, that is the key. Everybody gets excited about innovation, but showing a method, a path along that journey, which can be very confusing, if you can show them that and show them the evidence and how easy it is to get it, I shouldn't say easy, but how challenging it is, but there are, there are methods and tools around that. It makes it, it makes it much easier for them to, to take that learning back into their organization. A wall like this and there's not a single picture of a child on it, that's yeah. weird. He, he at least has a partner. Yeah, he has a partner. He has a partner. But no kids, so... No kids. But how does that... How does that lead to this? Then? Maybe they're uh, designers. I get the impression that he's into like convenient food at night. Um, Pre-packaged pre foods, a lot of leftovers. Because he but goes that, to the that fish don't produce market. Dis okay. He, he goes to the food market and buy groceries there. And mm -hmm. This is a typical exercise we like to do at IDEO. It's called Whose Life Is It? And it's a, essentially it's an it's exercise for the participants here to understand what it's like to be a, a cultural anthropologist. So the exercise is about taking a look, a close detailed look at photographs. These photographs are taken by the person that, uh, that the, the life that, that they're trying to explore. And it's, the, the task from this person is to, to photograph things that are meaningful or relevant in your life over a 24-hour period. So the team, the students here, don't know who this person is. They only can build a profile of this person based on the evidence they have at hand. This is a little bit like down and dirty ethnography, but essentially it's, it's a way to sort of, for them to extract meaning and interpret what they're seeing um, in those photographs. They live in a place where there is risk of burglary. You know, there's, they have uh, these uh, safety, bars. safety bars in front of the window. Their dream vacation so is where enough. everybody else goes. Maybe lower, lower. The future perspective of uh, 180 Academy is to keep creating, um, co-creating the school with a unique faculty of um, experts within radical innovation from all over the world and by, by keeping a flexible and open structure also in our organizational structure, we allow the school to develop uh, towards being um, a co-creation for of students, faculty and a board which we hopefully will extend to a lot more members. So rather than being a static uh, university or academy, we want to move not only physically creating more places uh, on the globe where we can teach, but also uh, we want to expand in the different offers we have within the four seas.